Good morning. In my last session, we were discussed up to the advantages of the physician himself is the prover. Today, first of all, let's see the precautions to be taken while conducting a proving. First, let's see the precautions of the selection of medicine for proving. The medicines to be proven must be well known and its purity and its genuineness and the energy are to be thoroughly assured. The medicinal substances must be taken quite alone and perfectly pure. Only one drug should be proved at a time, then only the individual properties of the selected drug will be exactly known. The medicine must not be given for several successive days in ever increasing doses because too frequent repetition make confusion confuses the symptoms. If we administer large doses of medicines for proving, they bring out the secondary reaction and not only that the speedy appearance of primary symptoms unsuitable for the study. Now let's see the precautions of the prover. The prover must take the medicines on his empty stomach. His diet should be regulated during proving. Substances having medicinal properties should not be given to the prover on the same day or on subsequent days or all days that we wish to observe the effects of the drug. The diet of the prover during the drug proving should be strictly regulated. As far as possible, the diet should be free from spices. The diet should be a purely nutritious and simple character. Green vegetables, roots, salads and herbs should be avoided because some of them possess some disturbing medicinal qualities. Uh, like young green peas, green french beans and carrots can be included in the diet because they have the least medicinal properties. The prover should be avoiding the habit of taking pure wine, brandy, tea or coffee. Before starting a proving, he must not consume beverages for a considerable time because some of them are stimulating and some others are medicinal. During the period of experiment, the prover must avoid all sorts of uh, mental and physical exertions. He should avoid urgent business that distracts his attentions. And the prover must devote himself to careful self-observations and he must not be disturbed while he engaged in proving. He should avoid all sorts of indulgences and disturbing passions. He must possess a sufficient amount of intelligence to be able to express and describe his sensations. Now, let us see when we consider the medicines is thoroughly proved. Here, uh, we can only be assured that the medicines has been thoroughly proved when all reproving reflect almost all the same symptoms are exhibited. The recorded symptoms should be completely concerning their specific sensation, localities, modalities with their concomitant factors so that a complete individual picture of the drug diseases has been established. In the clinically verified provings, there will be no new clinical symptoms will be appeared even after repeated clinical verifications. And the drug should be all, always be proved on suitable persons of both male and female sexes from all age groups and various constitutions. When the consideration of these points, we can 
conclude that the medicine is thoroughly proved. Now, uh, come to the recording of symptoms during drug proving. In the case of narcotic drug substances, proving drug substances proving symptoms of secondary actions are to be recorded. In all other drugs except narcotics, the symptoms of primary activities are to be recorded. Some drugs produces alternating symptoms uh, which should be uh, recorded and the modalities appearance appeared while proving that should be recorded with great precision. Any alterations from the normal state of health during the proving, even it is in minor one, that should be recorded. Now, let us see the merits of and demerits of employing large and moderate doses. The merits of employing more moderate doses of medicines within certain limits in drug. The primary effects are more worth because these symptoms occur without any admixture of secondary effects or reactions of the vital force. The demerits of employing excessive large dose of medicines in proving are the primary effects appear in such hurried confusions and with such violence that nothing can be accurately observed. The secondary effects also appear being mixed with some primary effects. The danger of poisoning and threatening of life of the prover may exist. These are the demerits of large dose provings. That's all for today. I will come again on tomorrow with the remaining portion. Until then, goodbye. Thank you.